for this closure, notice students are thinking about not only what they learned and what is still confusing, but how does this summary chart tool support their learning? And the rationale for this is that when students can be more active participants in what we are doing and why we are doing, they will be able to apply these skills in the future. They are also more likely to engage in the content. Going forward to Tuesday, students are going to be learning about energy. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is that for each portion of the lesson, there is a matching icon on the teacher slide deck and the Canvas page. So here we are on Tuesday. Here's our getting ready. This is what students need to be doing. As well as the goal for the day. In order to th be thinking about a real life experience with energy transfer, um, specifically thermal energy transfer or heat transfer, um, I want students to go and grab an ice cube from the freezer and hold it in their hand. Now, some students are not gonna have ice cubes. Um, and for those students, we want them to feel like they are still part of the, of the scenario. And so you can ask them to think back about a time that maybe they've held a popsicle and it got really cold, or they've had to hold a super cold drink, um, like a glass of ice water or something like that. Um, I assume that everyone has had an experience holding something really cold. Um, so you could just ask them to be thinking back about what did that feel like. Try to make sure that you're going to keep this at just about a, a minute. We don't want anybody to be getting any injuries. We will then be connecting what that felt like to energy. So um, students will be working on page 28 of their digital notebook or you can lead this as a whole class discussion. But here is the video embedded and students are asked to then define energy in the way that it's defined in the video and then to add some notes. For their work time, they will be doing page 28 and, excuse me, 29 and 30. 29 is still about um, just energy in general, and it's starting to get at how energy transfers. So students are marking the text and writing notes. On page 30, students are then getting deeper into heat energy and heat transfer. And um, that's done through this video. They then fill in the blanks using the words in the word bank. To go back, the reason that these words are in the word bank is so that students are using their cognitive energy to complete the sentences, not to generate the words. So each of these words is used one time down here in the blanks. And then for the connections now, I'm asking students to apply what they learned about energy and heat transfer, <clears throat> thermal energy transfer. Um, by the way, I did not use the term thermal energy just because I didn't want to spend too much time and I wanted students to not feel confused with extra vocabulary. Um, but for the closure, they are then using what they've learned here to um, explain what's going on with the ice cube. Wednesday is when they're going to be starting that lesson four. Um, they can go back and look at their predictions that we did on Friday, or let's see, it would have been on Tuesday of uh, last week. And they can answer this question in the Canvas discussion. Then students need to have a little bit of a, another go at the difference between, um, or rather, not difference, but the, the different types of data. So temperature, how we measure it, and sunlight intensity, what it is. Big emphasis here should be that these are on energy. This is about energy. Because again, why the air is different temperatures has to do with energy transfer. 